And welcome to The Verdict. Kent Myers here. Uh, Mick Cornett's not here this week, and he'll be gone next week as well. But after that, he'll be back. Uh, today, we're going to be talking about what we've called an exciting new program. You may be familiar with the name Barry Schecht, a, a person, a lawyer who uh, was uh, instrumental in uh, establishing a program called Project Innocence. That's trying to establish whether or not uh, convicted uh, people on, uh, in the penitentiaries have somehow been uh, wrongfully convicted through the use of DNA and other uh, types of analysis. Well, in Oklahoma, there's a project starting now under the auspices of the Oklahoma City University School of Law that's going to be Oklahoma's Project Innocence. We're going to be talking about that with the two people who are very responsible for uh, uh, coming up with the idea and will be responsible for implementing it. I think it's a, a fascinating idea uh, that uh, it will further the administration of justice in this state uh, and I think you'll enjoy hearing from these people. So stay with us. We'll be visiting with uh, on a very special show with two guests uh, coming up on The Verdict in just a minute. We'll be right back. Everyday America uses clean burning natural gas instead of coal or oil is a day of victory for our environment. That's why Chesapeake chose to explore for natural gas exclusively, and we've never looked back. Because natural gas burns twice as clean as oil or coal, and reducing carbon emissions to combat potential global warming is every bit as urgent as cutting our dependence on energy imports. As America's number one driller of new gas wells, Chesapeake is moving fast to find untapped reserves of natural gas here at home. It's the right fuel for America's economy and the fuel for a clean air future. We just happen to be early to see it so clearly. Chesapeake, natural gas wins the day. Welcome back to The Verdict. Uh, Kent Myers uh, doing solo today. Mick Cornett will be back in a couple of weeks. But this is a very special show for us. This is our seventh anniversary show. Believe it or not, folks, this show has been on seven years, and we hope to be on seven more with any luck, and it'll take some. Uh, but we are pleased to have with us uh, as one of our two guests today a person that was on our very first show seven years ago. I, I think fairly appropriately, it was, it was first aired on April 1st, <laughs> April Fool's Day, 2001. To my right, my longtime friend and uh, comrade, uh, John Coyle. John, uh, uh, as I say, was one of our first guests. He coined the first uh, word in our show in relation to one of the other guests' statements of fact. He, he f used the phrase, that's hogwash, <laughs> and so the verdict was born. I don't know what that portends for our, sh our future, but in any event, uh, John is an OCU uh, law and undergraduate uh, graduate. For over 30 years, he's been involved in criminal defense work. Uh, he has uh, been a legal analyst for ABC News uh, from time to time. He was named Oklahoma's outstanding criminal defense lawyer uh, on an occasion. This is his 11th visit to the verdict, and I'm confident it will not be his last. Welcome back. Thank you very much. You started Ken. us uh, in uh, grand fashion. Yeah, and we still look the same. I we think, haven't changed uh, a seven bit. Years Not a later, bit. So I'm the, glad to be here. Glad to have you. To my left is uh, Dean uh, uh, Larry Hellman, Lawrence Hellman, professor of law and dean of the Oklahoma City University School of Law. 
he did his undergraduate work at uh, Washington and Lee, did his JD and his MBA work at Northwestern University in Chicago. He's been teaching at OCU since 1977, has been, be, been the dean since 1998. He is an eminent scholar in a number of areas, but principally in the area of ethics, professional responsibility, how lawyers govern themselves and how they are to conduct their uh, practice. Uh, and he's uh, the person that all lawyers in Oklahoma look to for the final answer on what's appropriate and what is not. Uh, this is his first visit uh, to the verdict, but I hope not his last. Larry, welcome. Thank you. Thank you for Glad inviting to have me. You. Well, it's great to be here. Um, <clears throat> Let me ask you, Dean, tell us a little bit, this is a little bit off the subject of this new project, but tell our viewers a little bit about OCU Law School. We've had several of the professors on before, uh, but we've not had the dean, yeah. so we're pleased to have you. Tell our viewers what you want them to know in a minute or two about OCU School of Law. Well, gosh, um, it, it's a great law school. We have about 600 students. We have an outstanding faculty, many of whom have been your guests on the program. Our students come from about 40 different states and a handful of foreign countries, and we have alumni in every single state in the United States and about 13 foreign nations, and they're all doing wonderful work in a variety of fields, including public service, public interest work, government work, but uh, leaders in every area of, of law, including the, the criminal justice system, uh, great prosecutors, great public defenders, great private criminal defense attorneys like John Coyle. Um, our students are having a wonderful year. Uh, we've uh, done extremely well in interscholastic moot court competitions this year. Our Native American law moot court competition team won the national championship just a few weeks ago out in Arizona. Our mediation team uh, was the runner-up in the regional competition in Dallas a couple of weeks ago. And I, I just learned that our American Constitution Society moot court team uh, won the award for the best brief in its region that was just uh, the competition just completed this past weekend. Our, our law review is having a wonderful year. They've uh, published uh, five issues. We've got a great board of editors. It's growing. And um, I could go on and on and tell you about the great things that are going on at OCU. But the one thing I want to mention, which really ties into this program today, Kent, is that our law school has made a very special effort to be very closely related with the Organized Bar Association. And what we're doing uh, in this program that you want to talk about today is also a feature of the uh, a high priority on the agenda of the current president of the Oklahoma Bar Association, Bill Conger, who, as you know, is a member of our faculty and general counsel for OCU. Well, <clears throat> I know a lot of good things go on at OCU. I've been privileged to uh, teach there for a number of years off and on and have thoroughly enjoyed it. Uh, one other thing I want to ask you about, uh, Dean. Uh, you had uh, any number of areas you could have chosen from to uh, concentrate your efforts when you uh, decided to teach, uh, and you chose ethics uh, and professional responsibility. Why was that, and are you glad you did that? Well, I'm glad I did it, but I can't necessarily say that I chose it. It, it chose me. Uh, before I went into teaching, I was an attorney with the Antitrust Division of the Justice Department in Washington for the years of 1970 to 1974. and. Um, while most of our students today were born after that, they've all heard of Watergate. And so before I went into teaching, I survived the Saturday Night Massacre when Archibald Cox was sought to be fired by Richard Nixon and several attorneys general re resigned rather than, than fire him. And um, so I went on my way to teach, and I was going to be an antitrust professor, which I was. But uh, the dean at the law school where I taught then, Washington and Lee University, said, we have this course on legal ethics, and since you were in, in the Justice Department during Watergate, I think you'd be a good person to teach that course. And so that was my introduction, 1974, and I've got to say that it was um, a very challenging experience. Uh, it was a new subject for many law schools. There weren't a great deal of teaching materials as there, there are today. Uh, but I'm proud to say that one of the students in my first legal ethics course uh, Robert Gray later became the president of the, the American Bar Association, the, the second African-American president of the, of the ABA, and I was honored when he made time in his schedule to come speak here in Oklahoma City since I've been dean. Yes, I remember when he was here. It was a good event. Yeah. John. Yes, sir. Hogwash. Hogwash, for sure. Do you ever say that to a jury? Um, I sure do. Uh, 
<laughs> and, and a lot of other things too. Uh -huh. but I, uh, I'm excited to be on here because I'm really excited about this project. Well, tell me a little bit about the project, uh, how, what the genesis of it was. Well, across the country for years, you know, we've had a lot of people who were exonerated and released from prison because of DNA. And you've worked on a case and, or two of those. Yes, sir, and we've been involved in some of those, but nationwide there have been a lot of them. A lot of them are identified. We've released over 200 people who were sentenced to death. Over throughout throughout the nation, and a lot of these people have been identified. Of course, first usually by a lawyer involved in the case, but also by some students involved. I think three or four people were released from death row by some students at Northwestern uh, who who worked hard. And uh, Dean Hellman and I were able to make friends with a guy who did it, Mr. Marshall, and. Uh, what we want to do now, a lot of the DNA cases have been identified. What we want to do now is find things in cases that were wrong, people who are in prison wrongfully now for reasons other than DNA, like uh, eyewitness identification that was bad, uh, perhaps a false confession. There are a number of different things that we can look at uh, to find in the justice system to hopefully identify these people and then perhaps involve law students and others in trying to figure out ways to help get them out of prison. I think uh, our viewing audience uh, would be interested in your thoughts about the reliability or unreliability of, uh, of uh, eyewitness well, identification. It's, it's been shown that for a number of different reasons, eyewitness testimony can often be unreliable. Um, there, a lot of times they don't document very accurately the process that they go through. And once somebody identifies a picture, then that picture is in their mind. And it's sometimes hard to get it out of there. There are a number of suggestions uh, to make them better, such as having someone who does not know who the subject is uh, of the identification conduct the picture lineup for the witness so that the person who's showing it to them doesn't make suggestions. And sometimes I think if you know who they're supposed to choose, whether you're trying to influence it or not, it can influence it. Um, and that they have, they, they, a lot of times in these eyewitness lineups, they don't have, they will have one person who sticks out like the proverbial sore thumb and all the rest of them yeah. look a lot different. So the fairness of the lineup is important. John, let me interrupt you there. We'll come back to the, your thoughts about that. We gotta take a commercial break now. We're visiting with Larry Hellman and John Coyle on an exciting new project that's about to get started in Oklahoma. You're watching The Verdict. All children deserve a life of hope and love, but sometimes they experience a life of pain, neglect, and abuse. When that happens, each child deserves all the quality, assistance, and representation that can be offered in our legal system. For more information, call 23CHILD. Oklahoma Lawyers for Children, helping to bring hope and love back to the lives of abused children. That land next door was a mess. Take more than a lawnmower to revive that land. I heard the oil and natural gas people was cleaning up old oil sites, and it wouldn't cost us a flood nickel. Oh, yes, sir, it was quite a revival. The whole church showed up, want to make a playground for the kids. <laughs> it sure is a blessing. We'll see Meyer Eatman Tate. We're accountants. We do taxes, business valuations, estate planning, and consulting. And we're right here in Oklahoma, working with the owners of small and medium-sized businesses. Steve Wilsey and Stuart Meyer have the resources and the experience. We'll see Meyer Eatman Tate in Oklahoma City and Tulsa.
Welcome back to The Verdict. Kent Myers with uh, Larry Hellman and John Coyle talking about an exciting new program. As you learned in the early segment, uh, Larry Hellman is dean at the OCU School of Law. And one thing I failed to ask you, Dean, uh, one thing that lawyers always wonder about, uh, and that uh, your students do quite well. How'd they do passing the bar exam this time? Well, I'm proud to say that our students had the highest pass rate of any of the law schools in Oklahoma in 2007. For the Oklahoma Bar Association, our first time pass rate was a little over 95 percent. Wow. And that's a reflection of their hard work, uh, and I'm very proud of them. But I want you to know that a lot of work goes into getting them ready for the bar as well. Yeah, it does indeed. Uh, Let's talk now uh, about the exciting new program and your involvement, your law school's involvement in it. Well, the, actually, I've had students come to me for a couple of years and, and they're aware of these programs in other states where some of these programs are affiliated with law schools, some are operated out of uh, freestanding nonprofit organizations that provide clearing houses to review the cases that appear to be um, appear to have resulted in a wrongful conviction. And um, the, the, sti the, the students want to be involved in that. I mean, when you stop and think about it, Kent, we're all constituents and stakeholders in the criminal justice system, whether we're going to be a prosecutor or a criminal defense attorney or just a private citizen. And it's interesting to me to see that many of the leaders in other states who have, who have taken the initiative to to investigate the criminal justice system to see how it could be improved to avoid these mistakes have been lawyers who have not been involved in the criminal justice systems. They, they've been lawyers like you, antitrust lawyers in big law firms, for example, because they recognize that we all have an interest in having the criminal justice system be something that the public has confidence in so that we know we're convicting the right people. And as uh, from the prosecutor's point of view, no one wants to, pro to convict the wrong person because if nothing else, that means the real perpetrator is still at large. And so um, we, we have all of these activities in, in other states that have come to our attention, and it seems that the stars are aligned for Oklahoma to get seriously involved in seeing why there have been so many cases in our state that have been demonstrated to have been wrongful convictions. And this is a matter of very high interest for the current president of the Oklahoma Bar Association, our professor, Bill Conger, who is preparing to appoint a commission, a Blue Ribbon Commission, that will have representatives from all sectors of the criminal justice system, the police departments, uh, prosecutors, judges, uh, lay members, academic members, to, um, to more or less provide a, an analysis of what went wrong in these cases where we know that people were wrongfully convicted, they were on death row in six to eight cases, I'm not sure what the number is today, in Oklahoma, people have been freed from death row. We've all read about it in the paper. And sort of like the National Transportation Safety Board does when there's an airplane crash, I think this commission is going to take a look at those cases and see what went wrong and how could that be avoided and how can we improve the criminal justice system. And to the extent that our students can be involved in that research in looking into those cases and then helping with volunteer lawyers or perhaps a law professor looking into new cases that appear to have been mistaken convictions, uh, they want to be involved. And I want to tell you that the students who have come to see me are not necessarily destined for a career in criminal law. They just think that it's important to make as sure as possible that our criminal justice system is working efficiently and fairly to safeguard us all. I suspect you have a fairly large cadre of students that would be interested in at least trying to see whether they could be involved. I think we do, and, and, and you know from your work with Oklahoma Lawyers for Children what a um, wealth of talent we have at OCU and our law students who, uh, who want to volunteer to assist the, the licensed lawyers who are already out of law school who are taking on these cases pro bono to help children who are caught up in, in, the, uh, in the system being removed from homes because they're neglected or, or, uh, or abused. And I think those same instincts will lead students to want to be involved in this project because they know that they can make a difference, not only in a particular case, but in, in the system as a whole. 
And as I say, we're all constituents of and stakeholders of the criminal justice system. And every lawyer, no matter what kind of career he or she may embark upon, wants to be involved in improving the quality of justice in our state. John, one thing that struck me about what Larry was talking about was that it wasn't just the criminal defense lawyers that are interested in seeing this uh, kind of project get started and get implemented. It's, it's uh, prosecutors, uh, it's law enforcement, and it's people who aren't involved on either side of those tables. I think it's everybody involved in the criminal justice system and the public at large. I think everyone's going to win with this sort of a project in Oklahoma. It will help us improve the criminal justice system. Uh, it will help really identify those persons who are guilty. Uh, it doesn't just help free the innocent, it also helps convict those that are guilty. Uh, it's good for everyone and it definitely helps the law students. I can't imagine a greater opportunity as a law student to have a project like this to work on. It teaches you about justice. It teaches you about how to gather evidence, how to write papers, how to work with lawyers, how to work with judges, and everyone involved in the system. Um, it's a terrific opportunity, I think, for everyone. Uh, <clears throat> from a standpoint of your practice, do you think uh, this project, once it uh, gets uh, moving and uh, starts bearing some fruit, will uh, bring about uh, new checkpoints for prosecutors before they file or prosecute cases that they perhaps have not, or that have not been in place before? I don't think there's any question about it. I think it will help first on the front line, which of course is the police. I think they may screen cases a little bit differently as a result of what we're able to show them. And then also uh, it will help prosecutors screen the cases. So there's two places before we ever get the case. And I think identification of these cases is going to be important for lawyers. You usually know as a defense lawyer, and I was talking to Larry about this earlier, you usually know when you have somebody who is potentially innocent. And I think we can turn those cases over, but you have the case as a lawyer, and then you have the help of a law school and uh, all of these students to work on this case to help this person. It's, it's a really, uh, I'm very excited about it. And I'm ready to get involved in it, roll up my sleeves, and get to work with some of the students. Well, if you two get involved in it, it's going to be exciting. It's going to be well done. And we've got to uh, terminate the conversation here today simply because of time, not because of subject. Thanks to both of you for coming. Uh, you're watching The Verdict. We'll be right back. Thanks. comes naturally to Tulsa, where nature's beauty is matched with an eye for aesthetics. A legacy of neighborhoods graced with lawns and landscaping and handsome homes. A place that seems to have patented an ideal lifestyle. Bank First is loyal to the quality of life Tulsa assures its citizens, to the priority placed on education, culture, and growth. Loyal to builders who transform raw land into residential charm. Developers who see opportunity and add vitality to Tulsa's economy. Bank First serves both enterprise and private lives that need a loyal partner. It's how we help nurture this city's very good life. Bank First, loyal to Oklahoma, loyal to you. The Journal Record is pleased to be a sponsor of The Verdict. The Journal Record, since 1903, the best source of Oklahoma business news and legal information. We're back with The Verdict. Uh, thanks so much to John Coyle and Dean Larry Hellman to talk to us about the new Innocence Project or whatever it may be named that's getting started here in Oklahoma. It should be exciting. And if you want to tell us about a show you'd like to see, uh, come on to our website, theverdict.tv. Tell us what you'd like to see and we'll put a show together along the lines of your wishes. For Mick Cornett, uh, thanks again. We'll see you next week.
The preceding program was produced exclusively for the Cox Channel.